So, this is the seventh video in the series, and at this point, we are finally ready to uh, sort of officially define bee trees for you. Um, taking in mind that we just saw two, three, four trees in the last video. So, in our non root nodes, we're going to allow ourselves to have anywhere from t minus one up to two t minus one keys, where t is a parameter of the bee tree. Um, the root node will have from 1 to 2t minus 1 keys. And you'll notice if we have a value of t equals 2, then both the root and the non-roots will have 1 to 3 keys per node, just like a 2, 3, 4 tree. Okay. In general, if a node is not a leaf, uh, you would expect to have exactly one more children than there are keys because if we have you know some number of keys it breaks a number line into one more parts than that right one key breaks us into two parts five keys breaks us into six parts and just like in a two three four tree all of our leaves are going to be at the exact same level we're going to look at top down versions here um that's the last version of the two three four tree we saw there are also bottom up versions and if we look at a bee tree here, sort of the one issue that's a little hard when we try to illustrate them is they are so efficient, we basically cannot draw a large bee tree. Uh, just the screen becomes overwhelmed. So in this case, I say, okay, I have a root node uh, with say two keys in it. That root node has pointers to three subtrees and I'm not even gonna try to draw two of the subtrees. I'm just gonna draw the, the the root of the third subtree, or the the first, uh, the third child of the root node. So in this case, we know that the root node uh, must be the root node because it has two keys, whereas this child has seven keys. And um, in this case, I'm going to say t equals four. For sure, this must be a root node because once you have seven keys over here, you would never be allowed to have an inner node other than the root with fewer than three keys, okay? But in this case, I'm gonna say we have a T of four. So this node here looks full. The root is not necessarily full and uh, okay. So we're gonna insert a 150. It's a top-down version. So when we do that, we look at our root. Is our root full? It's not full, great, we can step to the next node. We look into that node, is that node full? Yes it is, it has seven keys, it's totally full. So what we're going to have to do is we're gonna to have to split it, right? So you're gonna go, oh, you know, that looks like it could be a node there, that looks like it could be a node here, and this 167 is gonna sort of come up here and be used to split these two separate nodes, okay? that's the way the split's going to work. There we go. Everything looks great. And now, of course, the 150 is going to go into one of those two children around the 167. 150 is smaller than 167, so it's going to go down to this child. Of course, the child's not full because we just split the child, and we would proceed on. That's the way that we're going to insert. Okay. There are a bunch of different B tree variants. Um, Few of them are sort of minor variants. For instance, uh, you know, you'll notice in this text, our maximum node size always has an odd number of keys. Um, so the maximum keys allowed in a node are is an odd number. You can find uh, some nice variants online. Actually, there's a nice uh, animation online that actually requires the maximum size node to be even in size. So. Uh, just a, a difference there. Um, if you go to the definition in the art of computer programming, I think that they allow you to have an even or odd max size. They have a more general version there that wouldn't, wouldn't sort of restrict the maximum size node to have an even or odd number of keys you get to pick. We've already seen one special case of two, three trees, or of B trees, that is two, three, four trees. Those are B trees when T happens to be equal to two and you don't actually worry about disk rights, right? Each node is gonna have one to three keys, the two, three, four tree, okay? 
There's a bottom-up version. We looked at the top-down version here to match the text. The top-down version probably allows for better concurrency. You can have more threads working on the tree at once without having to lock up too much of the tree if you're doing it in a top-down way. Um, there's B plus trees. That's where you say, oh, you know, I mean, we've been talking about these trees to store numbers, but of course that number is probably a key within a record. Where do you actually store the records? In standard B trees, you store the records anywhere in any node. In B plus trees, you say, you know what, let's keep all the records in the leaf nodes, and that way we can have a really high branching factor within the inner nodes, make the tree even more shallow. B star trees, you say, you know, instead of having uh, sort of a, the minimum size tree be about half the size, uh, the minimum size node be about half the size of a maximum size node. Instead, we're going to try to have it be, say, two thirds of the size of a max, max size node. Uh, just something to make your a little bit more space efficient. Anyway, there's lots of variants out there. How about B tree deletion? So my advice is never delete anything from a B tree. No, no, that's not really my advice. Um, look, that's the next talk. That's going to be the final talk that I give on B trees. Thank you.